so let's start with Cotiso. I know Cotiso was working some time ago in the in the high frequency trading. I'm not sure what you are doing now, so maybe you can do a short introduction on what's happening lately. Yeah, thanks a lot. Um, yeah, I'm still in finance. Uh, changed a bit, a bit, a little bit the area of finance. So from from the trading industry, I moved to banking, basically private banking. Uh, but I'm still in finance and still in fintech. So um, yeah, not uh, not sure okay. how we kick it off. Uh, do we do we do a short round of uh, intros? Uh, yeah, I mean I don't know what kind of project are you working now. Okay, uh, so I, I work with a startup from uh, Zurich. I'm the CTO there, it's called Everon. We are trying to democratize a bit the private banking industry. So the private banking is well, wealth management, it's a part of private banking industry. And it's uh, something which uh, even now is still kind of restricted to pretty rich people, let's say. And we are trying to lower the entry barrier for uh, for those uh, those kind of services, so people which are in the affluent market can um, get access to wealth management services and the type of services you would uh, you would get uh, from uh, from the private banking uh, industry from the pri private bank banking providers. So let's say. Okay, sounds good. Uh, let's move to Adrian. Adrian, welcome. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. I know you are engineer manager right now, right? Yeah. Hello, everyone. So yes, I'm an engineering manager on a for a data science team. I think that we are going pretty cool stuff here um, for uh, everyone which is in, in uh, interested on the computer vision, uh, machine learning, uh, generative AI, and so on. Uh, we are using all of them. Um, what for what purpose? Of course, to create maps, <laughs> to create better maps, to have better maps in, in Southeast Asia. Uh, I think that we are going to touch a little bit the subject in detail a little okay. bit later. So I think that okay, great. Uh, and now the man, hi Philip. <laughs> uh, welcome back in Cluj. I don't know. Tell us what you are doing in Singapore right now. <laughs> Um, well, I'm enjoying the cold in, in Cluj right now after okay. like the perma <laughs> summer. No, so I'm a, I'm chief product officer at, at Grab, so I lead uh, all of our product design and analytics teams, um, and I'm also uh, leading the, the the mapping team overall. And yeah, as as Ovi said, I used to live I think like five five six years in Cluj uh, a while ago, um, and yeah, been based in Singapore now for four years and. Um, yeah, I think like beyond all the stuff that I said, I'm, I'm um, also like spending a lot of our like efforts in in AI, with the Singapore being like one of the few countries that's in the middle of like China and the US. So we are like one of the few that are friends with both. So uh, while the US is sanctioning China heavily in this space, we are like get to benefit to talk with players from both sides. So it's a very exciting time and place. Thank you, Catalin. Uh, we are we are still each other pretty often lately. <laughs> yeah, Th thanks for inviting first. I was yeah. not sure if uh, the previous, uh, when we see each other, you invite me because uh, we finance different events or that I have something to say. Well, I but think you have something you to say. Now that you me to come here, it means I have something to say, so <laughs> thanks a lot. <laughs> no, no, joking. So, Katarin Golban, responsible for uh, technology development for uh, self-driving cars in uh, Bosch Engineering Center, Cluj. More precisely, I have a lot of uh, computer vision embedded activities and uh, now with different AI waves, uh, uh, we do a lot of uh, cloud and data engineering. So uh, I very much like the topic, uh, fits perfect to, to my domain of interest. Maybe also to share that, so uh, I am uh, have some roots in a company that uh, was many years uh, in Cluj here doing navigation on board back then and I see that it branched in many other companies in the meantime, but we may have some common roots at some point in the in the past. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> agree. Okay, so uh, let's start with the first question. So maybe we can come back to, with to Cotiso. Uh, okay, so Cotiso you are doing, uh, I'll not ask you about maps because I don't think you do maps, right? Yeah, uh, not really. <laughs> not really. Uh, Banking and maps, yeah, they are a bit uh, disjunct. Yeah, still might be a good opportunity there with the maps. Yeah, definitely, definitely, and especially in what we're doing, uh, since we want exactly that to, as, as I mentioned, democratize the, this kind of services, 
uh, and uh, this this revolution, which was uh, brought about by the large language models, could have come at the, at the better moment for us. Uh, so, so you are using large language models? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. I mean, it it helps us. It helps okay. a lot. It's it for makes development or for the both final solution. Both, both. Uh, like the development is that it's a funny thing. Like I, I find that uh, well, we use it uh, as a helper. Um, and that's the funny part. I find that developers are more reluctant to use uh, help from uh, ChatGPT or Copilot, whatever. Uh, everybody in the in our company, in the on the business side, everybody uses ChatGPT on a daily basis to help them. The guys on the development teams, <laughs> not that much. They are very reluctant for some reason. I don't know why. Um, that's the funny part. But uh, so we use it as a, as a helper uh, every day, and then we. Uh, also use it uh, in our product as part of our product in order to help us serve more uh, more people at uh, on in a cost efficient manner can you give us a scenario or a example yeah for example we can generate a, a description of uh, how a portfolio um, how le let's say you have a portfolio uh, managed by a wealth manager and then for some reason let's say the portfolio uh, the, the value of the portfolio goes down because whatever you invested in is not uh, performing well, and <laughs> that's the moment when, in in private banking, people call their banker. Uh, they will call their banker. What's happening? It's not like in in retail banking where well you just wait out. No, in in private banking you call the the banker, and basically if uh, what we're doing there we generate a short description of what's going on uh, for every single client. We generate a separate description because every portfolio is different, and uh, then uh, we are able to reduce the number of our calls or of the calls our relationship managers have to do by quite a bit because there's an explanation already there people get an idea people get an update okay what's what has happened and we find that uh, most of the times those uh, those explanations are, are pretty good interesting and you are using open ai or other provider yeah chat gpt okay cool Interesting. Okay, let's move on to Adrian. Uh, so, Adrian, I don't know. Tell us about what you are doing on the on the AI stuff with your team right now. I mean, what are the main challenges with the maps? Yeah, I think that th there are many. So, uh, first of all, uh, it d it uh, it's super important to have a as fresh as possible view of the day of of the reality, right? And uh, and to do to extract that information from the reality uh, and to integrate that into the map. Uh, what what that means in our in uh, in practice for our, uh, for uh, for our use case practically, uh, we are we are collecting continuously uh, 360 imagery uh, using dedicated cameras. Uh, you, you can think uh, to a similar case which is Google Street View because it's more familiar with you. Uh, to have an, an idea about how how many, so th for instance, only on only this year it was collected. It, it were collected more than one uh, 120 million uh, street view imagery, so it the the scale is quite quite high. Um, and um, yeah, I think that um, doing the extraction of those uh, I, uh, it's uh, it's a thing. Uh, but besides that, practically this I this is one only one of the pillars. Uh, the, the main pillars uh, which we have in order uh, as a data provider. The second one is the GPS pings. Imagine yeah. that we are doing the collection of the GPS pings of, uh, from, uh, from the phones of our drivers. Uh, and there are many, many. <laughs> in practice, there are many billions per, uh, per hour of the GPS pings. Um, and uh, the, the third pillar, uh, which was just started, it's to practically it's, uh, in, it's in the ramp up uh, phase. Uh, it's about the a camera, an edge camera. Uh, what we want to do with that camera is to not to do the collection of that information which is on the reality, almost instantaneously. Uh, how? By doing the processing, by moving the processing, so fr the processing from the server side to the camera itself. Why? Because uh, there is an AI chip which is there in the camera. Uh, th the, the goal is to run all of our models there. Uh, do the po geo positioning of the our detections there, and to upload only the uh, only the, the the geo position detections which are uh, which were pra practically processed in the camera. Uh, and yes, we want to okay. to expand it quite quite a lot, uh, starting this year. 
many, a, a big number of cameras, <laughs> okay? Uh, and um, yeah, practically this is the third pillar of the data which we are going to introduce uh, as, as, let's say, a very important source of, uh, of data for almost in real time for, I all see. for our maps. Really interesting. Okay, so it I'll is. ask you next more details. So if you go to Philip, Philip, how is to run the, the product? I mean, you are basically running the product itself, right? Or, or yes. <laughs> not just that, I mean, even the specifications and uh, the directions, right? So yeah. how, how, what are the new trends here? In AI and product. Yeah, I mean, you know, in maps. <laughs> in, in, in maps, map, yeah, I mean. Pr pr uh, I mean can, can you come a little bit? Sure, sure. Because so the projector is, no. okay, now okay. it's good. Good, okay. So um, my, my perspective is that AI is just like once in a decade technology that changes the user interface, right? Like, and as I'm now old enough, I've seen a bunch of these changes. So I've seen like in the, in the 90s when I like started coding, I seen the switch from like desktop to, to, uh, to, to web basically, by like a very different paradigm. I've seen the switch from like web to, to, to mobile. And I do think now with like kind of AI interfaces, this changes a lot, right? Like so basically what, what you now expect, like when you build an app, you expect like a user flow, right? Like you come onto your home screen, then you click on another screen, and then you click on another screen, and you make a booking. And, and like basically you have like kind of like an information architecture and a flow. Um, with AI, all of that goes like completely like upside down, right? Like at Grab, we have like hundreds of microservices and, and they're built like basically they're tied together. Somebody ties together, oh, for this screen, I need this 27 API calls, brings everything together and architects this, right? Like for AI, you have a flow where the user can ask you like anything, right? Like so that's I think the, the big, big change that, that, that we are seeing. Like in, in our case, right, like we are, we are super apps. So we have a lot of different services, as Roxana said earlier. You can book a ride, like in transport, you can order food. We operate three full service banks, right? Like so as, as Kutisto said, we have like a full banking license. We give you loans. We have an insurance product. So um, we have like uh, a partial delivery. We, we own a supermarket in Malaysia, right? Like so the scale of like our services is so big. And in the past, you wouldn't need to click through the interface. And in the future, basically, you can just like ask it. Like I mean, like all of you like talk to to ChatGPT, right? Like, and in the same way, like the 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 architecture is changing, right? Like you're not like going like and clicking through seven screens to find your service. And right, like Im imagine this right now when you book book a ride, right? Like for us, like it's like very it's like a complicated flow. In the future, you can say like, hey, I want to have a I want to have a car that I can take like three people and two dogs, right? Like something like that. What's the right taxi type for me? How much does it cost? Um, how fast can the car be here, right? Like whatever you would like normally ask a human. And in a, in a user interface, there's no way you can answer all of these questions currently, right? Like because you can have like 100 different questions and like right now, um, I think one thing that we've all learned is like basically design minimalist user interfaces that, that show you what's really important um, and in the future, the point is more, you need to build an API system that can have all the information and you only show it to the user when they ask, right? Like, so that's kind of, for me, like the big, big shift with uh, this kind of like really having services that, that operate with natural languages. So that's, I think, for me, the big shift. Interesting. And you will rely on the, on the open AI or you will build your own stuff? <laughs> um, no, we're good friends with the with the open okay. AI guys. So okay. they're they're like pretty pretty decent when they're when they're uh, not changing their leadership there. Other than that, they're like a pretty <laughs> good team. Um, but um, no, I think like I mean, what our our, our like uh, our principle is we d we do build a lot of own stuff because we operate in a very complex language environment. Um, right, like so for us, like languages like Bahasa and Indonesia, Thai, Vietnamese, a lot of them like the 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 large language model providers, they're not really amazing in those. So that's why in for some specific use cases, we've seen that we're far, far beyond state of the art. Like, where, like for example, we, we um, let's say did like translate like the chat messages that like when you arrive in Thailand and you want to talk to your driver, most of you I presume don't speak Thai here, but you still like want to have like when you like ca call your grab there, you want to like talk to your driver and say like, I'm here, I'm there, whatever. And you'll presumably send your message in English, your driver will probably not speak English. So the system automatically translates it to Thai. And uh, for example, Google Translate in Thai pretty much sucks. 
uh, it's not really great because they don't optimize it and they don't optimize it for our domain use case because most of our messages are are, are, are like very, very short, right? Like so, um, and that's where we, for example, build our own stuff. So we generally our philosophy is we build our own stuff if what is out there is not good enough, right? Like so in many cases, there's like OpenAI is great and then we just use it or other services, uh, Anthropic. I mean, there's so, so many good services out there. But in some cases, you really need to go deep and solve it, especially if you like us operate in languages that that are not the most like well known ones. Yeah, thanks. Makes sense. And yeah, it's a nice future. We'll see. Catalin, <laughs> uh, how how maps and automotive are going together, and how much need do you need for for you know, I don't know high fidelity maps? So, so uh, of course, they they go very well together. I mean, uh, maps it's seen as. Uh, redundant path when it comes to uh, safety and uh, to doing level three automated driving or higher. So of course they, they are very important. And uh, we also have a map, uh, map mapping activity. It started um, uh, with radar. So we have a kind of, we call it radar row signature and it's really already scaled globally, uh, mainly with the radars in the OEM cars, which are produced by Bosch. We collect data and uh, radar is not only for uh, detecting moving uh, objects and speeds and so on to do ACC, but it's also for uh, doing a pretty detailed uh, road signature. Now we complement that with uh, video. We go more for this uh, pattern of having edge computing. So uh, uh, I think we discussed uh, with you or with, with some uh, colleagues from Grab and uh, I was very surprised when I've learned that you send images and then you process things uh, uh, in the cloud because uh, normally we did it vice versa always, like uh, having uh, the ADA system and uh, doing online uh, recognition of everything and uh, then sending a very compressed uh, schematic, polygonal, whatever view of the environment uh, in the cloud where a lot of pipelines happen but more on this uh, high level representation. So they go, they go good together, it's a redundancy and uh, it gets, of course, more and more advanced. And what I like is that uh, we go uh, on both like on embedded, but also on the cloud when it comes to self-supervised learning and putting together intelligent release GPS tracks together with uh, radar, together with video and so on, more tracks, aligning routes and so on. So the, the methods that uh, are enabled by AI are more and more uh, advanced there. So. Uh, same as with chat GPT and uh, I like your, I never thought about this, uh, okay, putting services together, but it's in the end, it's a generic way to talk to computers differently. I always seen it from coding point of view. I mean, uh, you don't type anymore, but you speak and uh, then maybe you correct it or something like that. But in general, I think uh, the techniques behind this self-supervision, uh, which is a technique to train this kind of chat GPT like uh, neural networks, could be on text, could be on something else. What I want to say is that uh, same techniques applied for other modalities, we call it. And many, any sensor input could be GPS, could be, could be radars, uh, radar inputs, could be video input. So you can apply this self-supervision, um, means training without, uh, learning patterns without uh, labels. Labeling, it's quite expensive. So learning pattern without labels uh, uh, in a multimodal fashion, it's, it's really powerful today. This is, I think, the most, uh, the, the thing that I'm most main, mainly impressed and the most impressed of uh, when it comes to current uh, state of the art AI. Okay, makes sense. Okay, good. Uh, yeah, let's move to Cotiso. <laughs> uh, so, Cotiso, how, how big is your team, and well, you know what kind of specialties do you have there? Okay, so I'm I'm now with a small team, so. Uh, some you, some of you, you know and one developer. <laughs> no, it's not that small, but I mean, some of you might know me since uh, I was uh, with Tora. Um, we were 170 people, so I led projects there, which were over 100 people um, at some point. Right now, we're only eight or nine, I think, in the team. In Cluj or? Uh, mostly in Cluj on the tech side. So the the company is split uh, half in, let's say, the business side is mostly in Zurich. Uh, tech side is mostly in Cluj. I'm the one which goes back and forth every week or every two weeks. Um, and um, uh, yeah, so it's a kind of small team. So that's, that's why we need this kind of uh, 
help from AI, we need to make sure we are going to use any kind of help uh, we can get from AI because we need, as each startup, uh, as every other startup, we need leverage. We need and to. And since when is this startup? I mean, when? Did uh, start the How old start did okay, the startup started something like four years ago, and I've joined a year and a bit uh, ago. Okay, so you try to increase the productivity of the existing, the current resources. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We started with, a, we, uh, actually the, st the startup started with the outsourcing agency, and then we built our own team, and we um, we took over all, uh, all development, and uh, yeah, we are now at uh, full speed, uh, but even then, like, again, we need any kind of uh, help. Every startup should definitely make sure they use any help they can get and AI it's it's uh, it's an obvious choice and, and are you still writing code or not uh, with the help of ChatGPT, I am uh, so I before <laughs> before ChatGPT, I didn't write code let's say professionally for 15 years I think I stopped in around 2005 something like that uh, so I've been I've been doing management for it's not so good I've been doing management for like 16 or 17 years. Uh, and this thing, I mean, I've only done small scripts, project like this, uh, not professional. And I think, I do think most of the managers, once they get over a certain level, they should stop uh, writing code. If they st continue writing code, it mean it's, a, it's a red flag for me. They cannot uh, delegate properly. Uh, they, can, they don't trust the team to delegate properly. Um, but uh, now with ChatGPT, it's actually easy, easy for me. And I've done it just to prove uh, my guys that it can help, uh, it can uh, speed, your speed, uh, speed you up a lot, even if you're not familiar with like an environment. Well, but like that. Uh, about this speed up, I mean, reading the, you know, people who are using it for work, you can see that maybe it's helping you like 40, 60%, and the rest of that are, you know, bad answers, right? Uh, how you see this? I mean, it, it depends. Like initially, I mean, it can help you or can make you slower. So I would say working with uh, with a tool like Copilot or something like that, it's like learning a new language. But because you need to learn a little bit about that tool and you need to go back and forth, it's different, like completely different uh, compared to working with the with uh, with another uh, with another uh, like programming language. Uh, but uh, once you get familiar with it, and I actually had a discussion with Adi a few months ago about this, and uh, uh, he can probably talk more about this, uh, how can you get proficient working with uh, one of these models uh, as, as your actual co-pilot, and you can get, I mean, it's, uh, it's a process, you learn how to use it, and, and from there on you are pretty f proficient, you're f definitely faster than uh, without it. Okay. So okay. Adi, let's Adi, move Adi to maybe you, you can talk yeah, a little bit yeah, about your experience question. with uh, using this kind of copilot. Yeah. So uh, in our case, the let's say the most prominent example of using it it was in the in the Carta Dashcam team. <laughs> so in the Dashcam dash dash team, and why what wha why uh, happened that practically? Uh, the skills that team uh, has were was mainly. Python development, C++ development, uh, and I think that that's it. Uh, and it was a little bit of challenge because you want to write that code in Kotlin uh, because uh, the app is practically an Android service. Uh, and the team didn't know Kotlin at all, so it was zero knowledge about Kotlin. That was the, the uh, that and that was, by the way, five months ago, so it wasn't two years in the past, right? So, <laughs> okay. Uh, and we, th the request practically was to develop everything which I just mentioned, uh, including the model developments and so on, plus all the, all the code be being run uh, efficiently in Kotlin. Uh, doing that was a challenge uh, because besides uh, solving the, the, let's say, the functional side of the things, was also the learning process for, the, uh, for uh, implementing everything in Kotlin. And uh, the good part was that uh, one, uh, we went, we, we we had access to all GPT versions, almost from the beginning of uh, after they were released. That is a super super cool thing in, in Grab. Uh, Copilot was available for each developer also, uh, and also the 
the team practically was super open-minded to try it. Uh, and they've seen that it's, it's useful. It's useful exactly for this topic, to, uh, to, to, to learn the new language, to implement efficiently uh, some of the functionalities, uh, to design the structure of the code uh, properly uh, with, the, with the help, let's say, of the also of the, uh, of the ChatGPT. Uh, and practic because of that, I think that the learning curve uh, uh, for, for, for learning and implementing all of this uh, was super, let's say, optimal. Yeah. So M might be interesting maybe for the future if your team wants to write an article about you know best practices while working <laughs> with yeah, could Copilot, be. right? Cloud is here, so I think that he's the oh best okay. one to, <laughs> to write yeah, that article. Might be interesting. Uh, and, and by the way, as uh, Cotizo said, in practice, I, I don't write code anymore. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, running co I'm, I'm, write I'm writing code only for, not, not production ready, only from uh, uh, experimenting new things. Okay. So it's, no, it's nothing production. From it's not production code from my hands <laughs> these days. I yeah, but you still write code. I mean, yeah, I, I think yes. that's important because you know once you start writing code, you cannot. I mean, it's it's nice to do it. Yeah, and that's also when I'm writing code, by the way, I'm using uh, either uh, ChatGPT for uh, either Copilot. So mo more ChatGPT for. Okay. Like you are asking, okay, give me the code for doing this, or it's. Yeah, I can worried. give you an example. So you can ask, uh, which I which I did, let's say, n not so far ago. So you can ask, for instance, how I can visualize this kind of data. Like, for instance, I want to have an, an, a map in which I, on top of it, I have I want to uh, to plot uh, geojson content with some, let's say, geometry which I extracted from OSM. Okay, that is one of the thing. Uh, and the next thing is, for instance, I want to plot in that map uh, 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 visualization for a traffic sign. Uh, and also, um, also have an have, have an awakening to encode also how the traffic sign is oriented in the real world, right? This is a second thing. And then you can ask, for instance, I want to also plot some also to have a visual vis vis uh, so to have a visualization about which of the which of the ways the roads are one ways and also which is the direction and so on. So. Uh, that all the things, for instance, you can you can start a discussion uh, with GPT-4. I did that actually, and works. Uh, and it start it starts to generate first of all, let's let's say a script. Then you can ask, uh, give me some modularization and encapsulation of of, of that code, and it, it starts to extract the function in the proper way, right? Uh, and then you you say you are saying that I want also want to to change the, I don't know the, the the signature of some of the method to and to to take also some an, another parameters doing something, and do the changes, uh, and the surprisingly for instance for me was the fact that uh, you can even say that the output is correct but I have this error like for instance. I don't know, so some of the icon which I used to, to, to represent uh, the traffic sign orientations was not properly rendered, for instance. Okay, and writing that description, what happened, uh, for me was a surprise that, that, that the, the GPT was able to fix that error. Yeah. Right, to identify <laughs> and fix the, the error in the code. Yeah, the, the so I was just thinking the, the funny thing that, you know, you might got the code from your competitor or something, right? <laughs> I don't know that. <laughs> so, <laughs> or in, in theory, yes. We don't know. Yeah, in theory, yeah. yes. In theory, yes. Yeah. Theory, yes but happen. yeah, the, the the cool thing was that everything which probably you have to I don't know to search because I also did the ch did some checks. Is it uh, let's say in the same way that information available in Stack Overflow? No. no agree, so agree. it wasn't. Um, Practically, it won't mix. If you mix, let's say, multiple posts from Stack Overflow, you can arrive to the same solution, but it's not like in one only one post. Uh, and what that means in practice, in it for me at least, uh, in my understanding, is that you can greatly improve your productivity on solving problems, right? So th that was practically what happened. No, agree, agree, and for agree. me, it was something like, I don't know, one, two hours to explore and to produce everything which I, which I described previously. Uh, and have it in the way in which I wanted to have it uh, for, m yeah. for my experiment. Yeah. And in practice, probably this could be for someone which is not completely familiar with those packages, those specific packages, Python packages, like Folium and so on. 
probably it could take at least one day of development. So that yeah, is yeah, that is my takeaway from the, from okay. that experience, for instance. Okay. Okay. Let's let's move to Philip. Uh, Philip, I wanted to ask you. I mean, I think you got this question often, but why Grab is only in Asia, or I'm missing something here? Yeah. I mean, we have we have obviously a uh, <laughs> development center right. here, um, but I think for for our services, right? Like, I mean, first of all, we originated in in Southeast Asia and spread then through eight countries. And I mean, these eight countries have like close to 700 million people living there. We have, uh, we last released our, our data, we have like 35 million monthly transacting users. So what, what we firmly believe is there's still so much more to be done there, right? Okay. Like, I mean, right, like we have like, we're, we're quite proud that one in 20 people there every month use our service and transact on us. But <coughs> we also think that there's like 19 out of 20 people who we, we haven't reached yet, right? Like, so I think our firm belief is really um, that that we can do like so much more there, right? Like, and that's that's what's like motivating us instead of like just saying like adding more countries. I think we're going a lot deeper and thinking like how can we serve people better in the countries that we're already. Okay, and uh, you you I mean you basically you start a product on maps right some time ago. Uh, if you you know if you have to start something tomorrow, what will be <laughs> like a, a, a company? <laughs> like a startup, yeah. Or oh. wha if you ever think of this or not. <laughs> oh yeah, I think like I mean <laughs> like th these these days is like amazing to start something because I think always what I described earlier, right? Like whenever there's like a big new technology wave, it's the best time to do something, right? Like I've seen this with my with my last startup with um, Scobler, which was here out of Cluj. And there was just at the time when the iPhone and GPS came around. And that was a perfect time to start something because most people didn't like understand how to build mobile apps. Right? Like, and I've seen many other like really successful companies where like, Grab evolved in the in the mobile time, like Uber evolved in the mobile time. Right? Like you could have not done Uber on the desktop, right? Like which would make no sense. Right? Like so you could do it only on the phone. And so to to go back to your question, right? Like what what I would do now is um, I would do something that wasn't possible until until now, right? Like, and I think there's there's like many things that you could can do, right? Like this with this kind of new paradigm that you can really like talk to your computer, right? Like, so one one thing like just like I don't know if that's the company I would start it, but one one thing I tried like so I was two weeks ago I was traveling to to Thailand for an immersion, right? Like we do this at Grab where we go on the ground, so I go for example like deliver food and stuff like that and like try our services. Uh, but also like try our service like as a merchant and as a driver and so i went like a day to to chiang mai and i tried like how could be like chat gpt my travel guide right like so i was like randomly at this gpt has not vision right like so you can like upload photos to it and like ask it questions it's not only language but you can upload photos so like so i was going through these like uh, temples in Thailand and like making randomly like making a photo of an elephant and so like explain me what is this in like Thai uh, in Thai culture or like there was like this festival of lights where like so people raise this lanterns to light so I make like a, a photo of some lanterns and said like explain me what's the cultural background of this and it gives you like this text right like so this kind of thing is right like so stuff like look at industries like for example like travel guides and so on and think how they will be disrupted right like so because i honestly i've booked many travel guides when traveling around the world and that's quite nice but but like again like chat gpt as a travel guide was like pretty good right like so i think those are like all these kind of things that you can do that you couldn't do so probably like something along those lines is something that i would start like right? thinking about what are services that you could have just fundamentally not done right? like in the past like three years ago if you wanted to write an ai service that you can upload any random photo and explains you what it does, it would have taken you like a team of like a thousand people in 10 years or something like that, which probably what ChatGPT had like to build that. But it's just like basically like, right, like this was science fiction, right? Like general computer vision with the human language interface, impossible. Three years ago, like, like Google couldn't solve this, right? Like no, no company, no matter how large, could solve this. So that's kind of where I would start something. Uh, actually, Google you know, launched you know, the Gemini product. But I'm not sure how good it is, or I'm not sure if you saw the demo or uh, comments. Yeah, I've, I've I've seen the scandal around the demo. Uh. Yeah, <laughs> no, um, I mean, look, I mean, sorry. Wh wh what I meant is like Google couldn't have done it three years ago. I think now they 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 can, right? Like now, I think the th the development is super rapid, right? Like so, I think we shouldn't forget that GPT 3.5 just had their one year anniversary, right? Like so. 
and and one year ago this was like quite quite amazing then you look at like last weekend like the the french startup mistral they released a model that is on par with gpt 3.5 i which was the best in the world like a, a year ago and now instead of running on a supercomputer it can run on your macbook if you have a decently spec macbook mm. you can like run like the latest like mixtral like mixture of expert model and you can run it like on a on a three thousand dollar macbook right like and and that like a year ago required like a like server was probably like two three hundred thousand dollars right like so this stuff has become like incredibly good so i, I have no doubt that google will will have something that like i don't know if this is like gemini or if it's like a few months later but google will have something that's at the level of current gpt4 but also OpenAI will have something that's a lot better than gpt4 in in a few months so we'll not stay static long yeah i'm looking for this because somehow i think they are since the beginning of the year, I'm not sure how much they evolved, at least for, for the consumer part. Or oh, what it has massively see. evolved. Really? I'm yeah. I I mean at least I didn't see I mean, it look, look at this so when much. you use the service. Like, early this year, you had no vision, right? Like, you could, this is what I described, like, uploading images. This oh launched okay. a few months ago. You didn't have the ability to communicate with voice, right? Like, now you can talk to it. It can mm -hmm. talk back to you. So, it had voice recognition, text-to-speech. Um, then it has like data analysis, right? Like you can upload a spreadsheet, it can like automatically do that. You couldn't do any of that earlier this year. Uh, you have like the, the uh, one like other big capability is that has now browsing. Where like they say, give me the best hotels in Cluj, it can access real time live information from the internet. So I think like, I mean, um, I f for all people from Grapia, I wish like our product roadmap is as fast. Uh, I mean, they have like added like quite a bit of bit of stuff within 12 months, so um, I think it's it's pretty decent. Okay, cool. The, the people, I think that it's weird, it's weird that the people are expecting more and more peace of development, like a higher and higher speed of development. Uh, so you ju just mentioned that nothing was happened significantly in the past three months. So our expectation is to have months to months. Uh, GPT five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> so well, <laughs> maybe yeah, it's too ma much maybe at the level of of the of the, the I don't know maybe the quality of the the data you got. But but as as Philip was mentioning, yeah, a lot of different kind of data already. So just one out uh, hearing from some friends at Google. Internally, they do have amazingly good models. They are just not. They were not built and not focused on you know the general public. But uh, apparently they were internally demoing um, um, models which were on par with ChatGPT 3.5 a few years ago. So they do have amazing models. They are just not properly, they are not executing, in my view, as, as well uh, towards the general public. Once they make that shift, I think they will be amazing. Yeah, that's interesting because Google actually is known for, I don't know, just launching product that might work or might not work, and then they are closing them after one year. I mean, there were it's a net like company that. with a few hobbies, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's how, how some people <laughs> describe it. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so if you move to, to Catalin, Catalin, in terms of, you know, we talk about AI, what, and you are doing, you know, low level and, you know, getting the data getting the data from sensors so uh, l let me let me stay connected because uh, okay of continue and then i'll ask a question were, were talk so were, were said so um for example is going embedded it's, it's always a topic in automotive and um, also when we have those all those companies publishing the foundation models it's a large medium a low and so on version and uh, then uh, they can do this student teacher like uh, style i mean from a large model you teach the smaller model and the smaller models are actually embedded friendly and uh, they can be even made even smaller and i think that's uh, quite cool that you can do this kind of knowledge distillation approaches where you use a large model to teach smaller model that uh, can go embedded can go on mac or even on uh, this kind of uh, ai neural engines that uh, we have on uh, mobile phones or embedded devices and so on so it's a big business around uh, neural uh, engines and so devices that can do efficiently uh, inference uh, or all kind of stuff so not only text but also uh, vision of course or a multimodal and uh, th this is one of the things that's interesting then uh, another uh, thing that's quite cool i think it's uh, when when it comes to multimodal so there are uh, models that are mixing uh, video with uh, text as chat gpt v 
4V, whatever appeared, I think 4V is one from Microsoft. Anyway, they are very uh, brothers, yeah, there. So, so um, this, uh, for example, in automotive, uh, there are ideas to um, achieve explainability by using text uh, information. So it proves that when you put text and video together, you get more performance than when having just video together. So if you have some text-like annotations like uh, this elephant and blah, blah, then it's uh, easier for a video model to uh, detect the elephant. And then uh, this multimodality uh, could have very high potential. Uh, again, looking at other sensors or time series or whatever. But uh, I think uh, when it comes to explainability, th this was, I mean, we have clip models that put together uh, text and uh, video. But uh, similarly, we can think about having uh, explainability and then your car would uh, explain why it's uh, stopping because whatever danger was there or why uh, it was uh, slowly decelerating because it's a crosswalk in front and uh, there are some pedestrians uh, appearing that they want to cross and so on. So th this kind of uh, combination of uh, sensor modalities, I, I think it's another cool thing that uh, has potential. Okay. Uh, okay, S thanks, and yeah, sounds good. Uh, with that said, I, I'm fortunate we have to finish the panel <laughs> because I know Philip has to run, and also we, we still have two, two articles to be presented. So let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> Thank you.